Hello everyone, we are live with a the MCP Rivals Montreal Shark Tank versus the Pork Roll Protocol. Today we have game one of the series for round one. This is Nick from the Montreal Shark Tank versus Jin on the Pork Roll Protocol. And let's see what they're bringing here. We've got a web, we've got web warriors on Nick's side. This is the team here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut through every card here, but Zemo, Gwenum is new, so Black Widow, Electra, Splashes, Ben Riley. All right, and then we've got Web Warriors from Jin here. Deadpool, Agent Venom, Medusa. Interesting for the mirror. Uh, might be good here with Agent Venom. Blob, very interesting. Joining me on commentary is the captain of the Montreal Shark Tank Tank team, Vodka Blitz. How are you doing, man? Doing great, doing great. Uh, really hyped to be uh, finally firing off this event uh, with a mirror, nonetheless. Uh, as uh, precision, it is Nyx Pachri, as we have uh, a lot of Nyx for yeah. those who knows us. Um, so yeah, here we have the web's mirror, and I think both players teched pretty interestingly, um, in pretty interesting manners for the mirror. Uh, the event being list lock. Um, still uh, limits their options a little, but both players here are running Wheat Cakes uh, and Disarm as their um, Restricted Tactics card in order to counter it. Uh, Nick Potri is running Marked for Death, uh, which against characters like uh, Miles and the Spectacular is still really, really good. Yeah, uh, he's also running Masked Menace, which is a brand new card that came in the Gwenum and Ben Riley box. Yeah. So they're doing 16 threat. Let's see what missions they're playing here. They're playing research station, which was of course part of the, the, the round one maps that they had to go through. We've got scoundrels and paranoia, 16 threat. All right. We're looking probably out of five wide teams here with uh, I mean, my guess is a, a four threat and then four threes. Maybe that's my just initial reaction. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see anything? Uh, um, we, have we have toad here. Do we have a double two situation on Jin side? I don't, I think don't so. think so. Uh, I think we could see two fours, two threes, and a two. Uh, but I'd honestly probably expect just one four and uh, four threes, like you said, on each player's side. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at, like, Nick might go with, uh, like, he might do something like Gwenum. Or I think I think Nick's going to play Gwenum. He played Gwenum into me, and he just, Gwenum does, like, <laughs> was awesome against me and it, it was so i don't know maybe we'll see her who, who else does he have he's got scarlet spider that's a good pick too electra maybe we we maybe we do see nick play um who does he have he has black widow two threat so we yeah. could double for it with uh maybe like electra and gwenum or something i don't know like there there's lots of different things they can do uh mass menace is like the one card that like i uh, am um, i haven't seen played yet i've heard good things about it yeah, and so... it is a really, really strong card. I've seen it in action. I had uh, the opportunity to play GN um, earlier this weekend at the Atlantic City Open. Uh, and it is a very strong card to see in action, especially in uh, such good player's hand. Uh, it's been pretty impressive from what I saw so far, so I'm looking forward to see uh, what both players are going to bring up. Yeah. They both have it, and they also they both have disarm and brace for impact, yeah, which is pretty interesting. Neither of them chose to play R and D, which is like what has been popular for a recent while. But uh, disarm, I've, it's there's been a little bit of uptake in play on disarm in the webs list, and yeah. so that's uh, I, it's interesting. They both have the same restricted. Yeah, I think that's probably thanks to masked menace actually just being able to uh, generate a spread power. Sure, not as early as and efficiently as R&D on round one, but on subsequent turn, it is still a very strong card that potentially generates even more power than R&D. So by taking its place, it is opening. It does open their list to bring another restricted card and disarm against a uh, big attrition team has been uh, pretty strong so far. Um, so that is a a good pick here, and I like it uh, on the. Uh, from both players yeah that's right crunstall is asking if there's any other objective list running disarm and uh i don't uh i haven't seen it i've seen it mostly in webs yeah exactly yeah yeah you're, you're on the same page here but uh 
I think that if um if the other if there's other cards in the unrestricted pile that are played a lot, like fallback and mission objective and, and any other strong cards get pushed into the restricted, I could see Disarm being like one of the better picks there. Um in, in like of oh, yeah. Anyway, there's lots of like rumors going around of like card updates and things like that. Everyone's everyone is like hoping that uh that AMG has something in their uh lined up for mini stravaganza, which I think they just recently announced, which is uh, happening which, in about a month, right? Yep. Uh so. it was around this time of uh the month next month. Yes. Uh but yeah, I think most people are expecting changes if only because there hasn't been in a while and following the AMG's pattern of releases, uh that would make sense. Oh, here we're seeing activation from both players. Right. V- vodka, let me, vodka Bus, let me know what Nick's playing. All right. Uh, Nick is bringing uh, Miles Morales, Black Cat, Spectacular, Spider- uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, Gwenom, and Baron Zemo. Uh, for Tactics card, he's brought All Webbed Up, Aunt May's Wheat Cakes, Brace for Impact, Masked Menace, and Marked for Death. Okay, on this side, we have Jin's playing a Miles Leadership with Spectacular and Gwen with Deadpool, a- Agent Venom as well, and then uh, Deadpool as a splash. We've got Fallback, Aunt May's Wheat Cakes, all webbed up, Masked Menace, no matter the cost. All right, so both players bringing all webbed up, Aunt May's Wheat Cakes, and Masked Menace. Jin opted to not bring Brace for Impact. Uh, instead, hold on, they'll, they'll yeah. And instead brought no matter the cost and fallback, whereas Nick has marked for death and brace for impact. Okay, yeah, I see it. All right, here we go. They are uh, they're off here. We do have them on clock, so they're they're not going to feel any heat right now. But maybe uh, if the game goes a little longer than anticipated, I'm hoping that their uh, their hands get a little shaky. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, and I think we have uh, interesting squads from both player. I think Nick here chose uh, obviously the aggressive option with uh, Baron Zemo and Gwenom and Masked Menace. Uh, I think he's probably going to be planning on putting on uh, putting damage on uh, Jin's webs, uh, which with no matter the cost puts some more pressure on his models. Uh, and with Gwen. And in Deadpool, who are uh, somewhat fragile, especially without exceptional healing, uh, he might open himself up to uh, be targeted by some pretty nasty attacks. Yeah, that's right. Deadpool is a cool pick here. The healing will uh, help him, uh, will help like negate the negative effect of picking up an extract early. And the, the plinking damage that he can do with his, his build, spender on the his other side while also having the ability to take power away from uh, other characters with Merc with a mouth might Merc with a mouth might uh, might help out a lot for slowing Nick's Nick down and uh, like like taking away Zemo being on two power is a way different Zemo than Zemo being on one power and same with like him Zemo being at four power it's just like uh, so if you're able to use Deadpool's ability on Baron Zemo, for example, same with Gwen. Like a lot of these characters, these spiders love power. So Deadpool could be uh, could be doing Merc with the Mouth often enough to impact the game. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I agree. I think Merc with the Mouth here is going to be uh, pretty efficient and uh, good at limiting uh, Nick's output during the game. Right, Deaton in the chat here saying uh, that uh, Gwenum, if she gets to start throwing things like crazy, it might uh, it might be big. Uh, I think uh, did Matt Alex just join? Hello. Hey, hey Matt. All right, sweet. Now we have uh, someone on from the USA side representing the uh, the team, or like here to help support the Pork Roll Protocol team. I think you're you're pretty close to these guys, right? You see them often in the uh, in events. I guess I guess we're all you guys are all pretty close generally. Yep. Yeah, I'm right between New Jersey and Montreal, so oh, New nice. Jersey guys come up, Montreal guys come down, and I get to see all these guys. Also. Nice, nice. What do you? Th- okay, so um, are you in the room yet? I am. I have the game on your stream. Okay, perfect. You can join the room if you'd like, uh, but 
Yeah, otherwise, what do you think of the rosters that both players brought? What do you, Anything catch your eye? I know Jim loves to play Deadpool in his Spiders roster, which um, I think is very, very good splash for that. Uh, you know, can't be pulled, right? So it definitely helps against uh, any of the pulls that Nick may have, but he did not take one. So nothing coming from that side. He actually, um, I watched commentator on one of his games at ACO, and he didn't take one in that game either, which I think was a good call. So. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see if we can what Jim is going to do with, with Deadpool. And Nick, um, yeah, he played Gwenom a lot over the weekend, which was nice to see. I personally don't take, but I think she did some work for him over the weekend. Yeah, I had a, I had a game against Nick where his Gwenom moved up, attacked Dr. Voodoo, did two damage to my Voodoo, moved again, and threw a size three terrain at my character that was sitting on the back of the D-shape. Uh, on my D shape, or like on my home D, and I was like, great. I, and I, of course, that character picked up something and couldn't brace, so immediately I'm getting four damage in my face that I have to dodge on my probably one of my more fragile characters. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, as expected, right? This is a good setup for low warriors players. So yeah, it looks like setup. looks like Black Cat has uh, moved onto the middle, grabbing a paranoia, taking a damage, but uh, she's pretty tanky because you can't reroll or crit against her, and she has cover because she's within one of the Scoundrel for now. So let's see. Uh, oh, I uh, I do have to say, though, that Agent Venom ignores cover, so that'll be a big thing, a big factor in this game, or we believe it to be, if Agent Venom uh, just rolls a decently average amount of dice, average amount of successes, we'll probably see the cover negation be a, uh, a factor. Yeah, I agree. And I think from Nick's side, having all physical attackers, he's going to have a very hard time putting a dent into Agent Venom. Okay. Yeah, and, and Nick's got Mark for Death, and Jin has Agent Venom, so we'll see which one is the. Uh, pays off. I mean, obviously, Venom pays off more in overall in the matchup, but will the one card difference of Mark for Death for Nick and no matter the cost for Jin make, it, make the difference in this match? Yeah, that is that is important to see. Uh, it'll be important. Uh, both of those, uh, the card and the character. So let's see. We had Jin's response as an opening activation was to grab this flank, ma uh, paranoia on the bottom of my screen here with Miles. He is on the size four terrain, so he'll have he'll have cover there. And uh, yeah, so we'll see if what how Nick responds here. He's probably gonna focus on grabbing another. Extract, it looks like putting Miles on the middle might be a good idea. I can see that. I like that because you're not going to take damage if you grab it. And also, it, you're going to have two models in the middle to um, to basically try to win that center. And looks like he's throwing Zemo there. It'll give uh, defensive rerolls to his team, except against Agent Venom, of course. And... Who and J or Nick did have priority, so he's got two fast movers in the middle that can rotate probably into safer positions if they're taking too much heat uh, in round one. Yeah, I actually prefer it to Miles grabbing this side just because uh, he would be near uh, Ghost Spider, who would be able to move, impact webbing, and then pull him uh, away from uh, the center uh, right into Deadpool's line of fire. So uh, I think that was the right call, not grabbing the uh, that extract. All right, here we go. Jin's grabbing with Deadpool. For, uh, yes, reasonable. You'd rather have him grab it. Because he gets to heal the damage. Okay. <laughs> Look at that, Nick's like Why? thirsty. He's, he's he's like antsy to play that Gwen move. Is it is this too early? To, are you playing, or what else do you have to do? You don't have uh, to do this right away, right? So yeah, uh, I agree. But since you have, uh, since he has last activation, uh, since he doesn't have last activation, 
Uh, he, I think, figures he won't be able to control all the points and going into Deadpool uh, with Gwenham now and probably Miles' next action or, uh, is going to uh, and to already start putting some damage will probably do good work here. Yeah. This is uh, Brady Brady mentioning that both players might play Mask Menace on the same turn, causing some confusion. I would uh, I've never <laughs> seen it played, so it would be pretty so you, wild. What's interesting about that, this came up in a tournament when I was actually playing Jin, is when you play Mask Menace, you can't place your token within three of any camera tokens on the board. It doesn't say yours. Oh, we oh, see a very strong attack from uh Ooh, yeah, that was a big hit. Uh, just straight up using that. Oh, that is absolutely crazy. Oh, man. Wow. Dropping the extract. And uh, this also lets Gwenum take her me uh, her long move because she already moved. So now she can just straight up move and pick up the paranoia token. Uh, probably on... Um, probably even sitting on the scoundrels or at least very yeah, close. Yeah, it looks like very it. Close. Yeah. I think she's got it. I think she's fine. Yeah, she'll leave it. That's, yeah, for her to squeeze in there is no problem. That is kind of greedy. I think I would try to position it from the paranoia token, uh, just so that you can move as far back as you can. That's um, that is actually uh, <laughs> that's a big problem for Jin, uh, because now the now it's just gonna flip. Or Nick's gonna score a lot of points this round. I think now he's gonna score. Uh, he's gonna score at least two, three, wow, four, six points this round is what, and seven if he is, keeps the middle for some reason. I mean, he might be, he, I don't yeah, think he'll he, be able to because Zemo can. Yeah, if Jin grabs the middle, gets that middle point, then it'll be seven to seven. Ah, uh, sorry, six to six, right? Three, two, yeah. Okay, so he's gonna go, he's gonna lock in that bonus point there. Looks like uh, Nick still hasn't paid for the has yep. he hasn't paid for the piece yet. I don't think so because he did five damage, uh, four damage to Deadpool and is on five power. Here it looks like yeah, they didn't, there we go, they got it, there perfect. Go. Oh man, but yeah, I think this puts. Uh... Oh, there are uh, their players are saying they're gonna try and tab the models to oh, say which attack they're gonna do. Love it, love it. The pro, I uh, love when uh, I got pro gamers on stream. Oof, I think this is kind of ambitious because this might put spectacular Spider-Man outside of range two of miles. Hi, Alyssa. Thanks for joining. The uh, Alyssa also says hi to Simon and Matt. Hi, Alyssa. Hello. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, another very strong attack. Um, yeah. Here I think going into Zemo. Uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. Zemo reroll and. Ooh. Oh, and cover should get three blocks, taking one damage. Okay. But he is going to be pushed. Yep, because it is impact weapon. But he's not within two of miles. Is that what I'm seeing? Uh, I am not sure, but I think he's outside of two. Because he placed to be within four of Zemo. Um, so yeah, this might uh, deny uh, Jin the bonus point unless he goes for it with Agent Venom. Yes, but also he just denied... Oh no, Miles can hit Venom, Agent Venom, or Gwenum. To get the bonus point there, okay. <laughs> so, all right. So there's yeah. So Nick is still looking pretty strong here. Is the so yeah? We're seeing the range two is out. On Outside this. range two. Tough. And I think that might be. Oh the... he! Oh oh! Look at what he Jin did. He just paid paid two power on spectacular to bump yeah, him so... over. Good, Ooh. right? Pay two two power, get a VP. It's not a bad. Yep. Yeah, not a bad trade off there. But it does put spectacular Spider-Man in a semi-awkward position going into next round. Yeah, he is gonna not be doing much except probably rotating, maybe hoping yeah. for a, that wild hit on a on a swing swinging strike to. But we'll Ooh. see. Is he going? I don't think he gets to Miles there. Um, 
if he was getting 10 miles there, being able to use impact webbing on him would have been pretty big, uh, potentially denying the VX. Yeah. So this looks like, are, okay, so are we going to see, oh yeah, he's out on the three there. So are we going to see Gwen or Gwen and Venom both just move to the middle and win the, and win that secure over Black Hat? I'm just like trying to understand what Jin's got. What is Jin's best option here? You'd get you'd get two. You'd stop the secures at two to two, and you'd score two on extracts while Nick would score four. So you'd be down by two VPs. Or the other, I mean, actually, it accomplishes. Actually, I say that, but it accomplishes the same thing if you tie the middle and then put Gwen on the back scoundrel you're still denying and scoring one you're still both scoring two so looks like outside Ooh, reach he's doing this to avoid the counter attack okay interesting i think it's probably the right call um but here if um agent venom does not connect the zemo he is keeping the central point yeah, but I think he's take he has to take the risk. There's three. Nick can't re-roll here. Uh but so yeah, so he'll be taking a damage, which is the important threshold for Agent Venom. Okay, yeah, so he needed that what he needed that to uh he does take one on Zemo, which is which is interesting because now you're setting up Zemo for uh only having three health left and Gwen Gil will get to take a shot at him if she wants to. So yep. um yeah, so let's see. Let's see how Gwen is able to res or how Nick responds with the last activation on Miles. We've got Agent Venom tying the middle here. Um, so so then, do you just put Miles on the middle of the point? Then I mean, it seems like that might be the best thing to do, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> Agent Venom being there is scary. Yeah. For sure, I don't think you want to put Miles near Agent Venom if you can help it. I think put it. In Putting him probably somewhere near Gwenum and the ambush, um, just to make sure you score the proximity victory points and probably get to keep the back ambush if Gwen moves, and uh, impact webbing to try to displace a model or uh, webline it afterwards. Yeah, I think Nick's just seeing the the ability to score high in round one, and he's like, and he's like, I could score seven points in round one if i put miles in the middle and gwen doesn't follow suit or doesn't dis isn't able to displace me uh from nick's perspective so that's i here we go look at that seven vps in a round is what it's looking at looking like for nick that's that is a huge flip uh because of deadpool not surviving not uh staying healthy Uh, yep, here, this does provide Nick with a 2VP swing here. Uh, yep, scoring both the middle and the proximity point. So, uh, you could, you could like move, hit Zemo and then, or I don't, can you get range 2 on Zemo where he is right now with the long move? Maybe not, but, uh. I think you oh, can. Oh, you can. You I can. think you can. So you yeah, could. You, sure. you could, but then the question is, do you stop the VP, or do you retreat back to your place, or do you just do an impact webbing? Looks like we're going to see an impact webbing here. Yeah, I like the impact webbing because potentially you can uh, displace both Agent Venom and uh, another character with uh, webline. Yeah, here we're seeing. Yeah, so I think what he's going to do is is pick up the extra power with the impact webbing and then pull Miles out of uh, buddy range. Can so can you wild here? Oh, good roll. Which will let uh, Gwenum get displaced. All right, that's um, big. Shutting down a VP on uh, Nick's side is huge for Jin. Here we see. 
all three rerolls. So two for spider sense, one for leadership. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, blocking oh, a yeah, there you go. Five, <laughs> uh, but still getting the push there. Yeah, she's um Gwen getting to roll four physical and three rerolls. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, and same with Ben, obviously, gets to do that, too. But there we go. A huge VP denial there. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Matt, you were saying the displacement on Miles to get out of buddy range. I don't know if that's possible because Zemo also has one. So it's like you're t you're only paying for the this the VP tie on yeah, the secures. Either way, cost him a VP. So. Yes, it's good. Um, yes. So here we're seeing a web line from Gwen into Miles. Okay. Uh, which will probably give the center to Gian, but not deny the extra VP from the proximity point. So this is uh, so now we're looking at a score of five one four. secure. Yeah, five. Yep, five on Nick's side and four, uh, two three. Yep, you're right. Five four. On four. So look at that, and a one VP difference for uh, for. Nick, all right, Jin is like, I feel like he's back in this, but the problem is that, the problem that I see generally here is that the Nick has three extracts, so now he can just like play defensively for, and maybe score out the game fast enough. Oh, he's missing a, we're missing a VP on Nick's side, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Deaton saying that Jin re has recovered nicely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that wild on that impact doing was, was pretty big for him. <laughs> the problem is, uh, uh, Simon, you're you're typing in the chat right when all the noise is happening. Oh, the yeah. Up. yeah so they, I don't know if they'll hurt it. There we go. We got it. They got it. There we go. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> King Mark. Yeah, the impact webbing had a big impact. That's that's. Yeah, that's right. All right. Here, if you're Nick, who do you go with? Trying at the top of this round. Okay, so I mean, I think you go with Zemo, and you just—I don't know—maybe just like go into Gwen. I don't know. Gwen is so she's like right there. Uh, that would be my instinct power. too. Um, here he's already within two. Um, so with cover and the defensive reroll, I think you would still want probably to charge. Uh, it may be also a mask menace turn. Um. So yes. we might see um, Nick play. Is this played? At, let's see. Is the card played in the, in the power, power phase? Power phase. Okay. So we might. We, let's see if we see it or not. It uh, looks like we have. We're. Hmm. We don't know if they've moved on to the activation phase, but. But yeah, I agree with Deaton here. I think you have to protect Zemo, whether you... Uh, right? Are we seeing... I think I'm expecting a... Oh, just straight up builder. Interesting. Uh, he, he, he paid won. for... He paid for Master Swordsman. Yeah, uh, and I think he is Ooh. glad he did. <laughs> that is a flat zero success. Yeah. Uh, right, converting three uh, would still strategic genius, so... Getting through two damage. Uh, so Gwen will have a reroll, right? Yeah, so there, here yeah. this comes. And so, she so has cover. cover as well. Yep. Yeah, so getting through two damage and bleed. Um. All right. Yeah. Deaton suggesting to get Zemo the heck out of there. You got to protect your assets. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I was kind of expecting just a steel rush uh, to get the free move, or uh, maybe that's what we're going to see now. Just to get close to Gwenum. Alright, we have uh, two power spent on Zemo, so... And we're looking at six dice, so I am expecting a steel rush here to get out of dodge. Alright, uh, looking at three so far uh and no blocks so this might just take care of gwen of gwen we have cover and a reroll so i wouldn't say it could go to two so blocking there two we go <laughs> okay <one. laughs> 
but getting close to SEMO. Hey, from yeah, from there, Zemo still within four of Gwen, so yeah, still pretty close. To... So the one thing that I have only played against Gwen once, so I haven't seen her too much. The one thing that's interesting is she's got pick uh, on someone yourself, pick on someone your own size. Uh, if she's yeah. within three of the attacker, and they attack someone else, she can pay two power and then clap back against them. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if she I agree gets with that. Range. I'm not sure I like fueling Gwen up uh, and not committing to dazing her. Uh, I think that was kind of risky. Uh, and now she has the power to displace two model and shake the bleed. So she's juiced up to be as annoying and disruptive as she can. Yeah, I think. And the nice thing is, is that Jin can just wait, right? Because if Nick dazes, dazes her, then he gets priority next turn. Yeah. So he doesn't. He doesn't have. He's not forced to go through right away. Uh, the so I I imagine that like my in my thinking is that he'd just send someone else to finish Gwen off before she gets to activate. But I would I would expect here we are seeing Agent Venom going into Miles. Uh, this looks like a grenade throw. Okay. Set up generates. Ooh, it's, it's, a, it's a five dice attack. So is grenade five dice on him? Yes. Okay. All right. Ooh, oh, so wait, blocking is. two. Against just a one, so Miles takes two. And, and yes. on fire. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'd be scared now. It's crazy how, like, two points of damage on a web is, like, so, f like, it changes it completely. Absolutely. They're so tanky, but it's not because they're health pools. It's Ooh, obviously because they're rerolls. Pretty big whiff here. Oh, uh, no. One, uh, which won't be blocked, but is still um, pretty Ooh. punishing. Yeah, man, just getting, yeah, oof. I mean, you would have had to still roll three out of five dice successful, which is like, that's like average, right? So it could have gone either way. It could have got him, could have not, like, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a pretty big danger here for Gwen, especially without Brace for Impact, uh, as Gwenem could uh, move, throw Gwen slightly off the point into Deadpool, uh, then attack her to then set herself up for the central uh, in the center of the board. Right. Yeah, that's really good too because she, of course, will basically have this like range three bubble, six inch bubble around her where if you do any attacks, you're uh, you're at risk for taking punishment in out in your during your activation, which is always very strong. Yep. Oh, I think. Yeah. Nick is considering a very aggressive Miles placement in order to get Aquan. Uh, I am not sure I'm liking it, especially next to a pretty juiced up Deadpool. Um, we'll see. So, gets to the point. Yeah. If he takes out Gwen here, it's going to swap the priority over, so it will mean that Nick will get to activate last, yeah. and uh, and Jen will... will uh... Have to, priority. Yeah, have priority. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, two, but getting the wild for the throw at least. Uh, so Gwen is likely blocking maybe everything. Uh, using leadership reroll. Uh, ooh, takes one and throw, which will probably That'll get. That'll finish her off. Okay, very interesting. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Deadpool look to take Miles down this town, this round and set up maybe a KO on him. But the problem I guess I can see is that uh, Dead Miles doesn't hold an extract. So like the more attacks you put into Miles, uh, Nick's, Nick uh, from the red side, the red Miles, the teal Miles, the more time you're kind of slowing down, not getting after the characters that actually are holding the VPs. So... Uh, it's tricky. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't know what to do here. Uh, all right, let's see what Jin does though. Here's the here's the dodge roll from Deadpool. Nah, taking two. Um, and I think here you also probably want to kick Deadpool or run away. But with his place, I think Deadpool's ability to chase Miles is pretty good. Uh, I think you 
probably rather kick him and try to squeeze some damage in. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, we're seeing two he's power. Spend three for a spender. Oh, three for the he's spender. Gonna spender him, all right. Yeah, he's going to try to just take yeah. him right off the board, which would be actually crazy. Uh, that would be very amazing for really Nick. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is uh, not terrible so far. Oh, that's uh, not going to get him yet, though. Does it get? No. So he's not going to kill. He's not going to KO Deadpool. But it does leave a dent, especially if the rerolls don't convert here. Uh, so still taking two, uh, which oh. kind of forces uh, Jin to go with Deadpool if he wants to keep up. Yes. That's crazy, man. This is crazy because anytime I play against Deadpool, he survives until freaking round six. <laughs> and we're on the uh, halfway through round two, and Deadpool is almost dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then we're playing Web Warriors. We got Web Warriors here, which is just crazy. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. He's got a lot of power. Yeah, there's been a, there has been a lot of violence. You know, I think with Ben in the chat, he's probably happy. We're seeing a lot of slaps here. <laughs> That's right. Okay. We're seeing a maximum effort from Deadpool into and Miles. miles uh, which I think is the right call. That spender is pretty devastating. Um, so here. Uh, ooh. Oh, That's yeah, going to get him. I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. It still gets him. Uh, if he uh, gets it by the trigger oh no i get some dice converts that is a dazed mile yeah so interesting that if uh, uh that something that i just might have mentioned was or like i was just thinking was that if you have an exact kill with the damage on deadpool maybe you try a reroll to reroll out of exact damage assuming you already have the wild on the effort mm. that way when you hit him with the wild you can obviously get you can get power back from that i know it's like kind of silly and niche very niche <laughs> but uh um interesting all right so deadpool has a short advance uh, from his yeah. maximum effort still i am not sure i am liking this no, because no. he is resolved he exposes himself to be attacked by gwen and i think if gian misses the window uh oh no it looks good here uh had he missed that window he would have exposed himself to just straight up being dazed so he's going to do a uh he got within range three of zemo to do what uh, what did zemo pay for oh no he uh murked with the mouth uh zemo oh okay and now he's going to move back onto the point here zemo has now zero power and Deadpool is going to heal too, hopefully. There we go. And all right, so there we go. Let's see if Deadpool will survive this round. Not a lot of firepower left on either side here. They've kind of like uh, shot all their <laughs> all their webs. I've been. Uh, let's see, Gwenum's actually, uh, I say that, I spoke too soon. Gwenum still can do some big damage with that throw. Yeah, especially since there's a size 2 near the point, which uh, she can probably pick up while being on the point. So, like, moves, gets her attack into Deadpool, then gets to throw the size 2, uh, which is pretty strong, and I think you're fishing for the KO here, if you can. Yes. Black cat, when you attack, let's see here. Okay. So she doesn't have the ability to ignore cover like the other Venoms do. No. All right, yeah. So she'll still have to punch through with only five dice, maybe. The other option yep. is she could, she could spend all, she could spend three power, but it's not very efficient. Yeah, I think you'd rather roll your five fish for a woo. -woo, -woo. She's man, she's five. rolling so fucking hard. Been very, very strong. Oh, full six, and that just. Gets oh that. man, that's. Yeah, can't do anything about that. Oh, he blocks uh, three with cover. Um, what is going he on still here? Has the reroll, uh, from karate, so blocking three. Uh, still Live taking three, and she has the throw, which will be enough to kill him. 
Uh, she has the throw, like the terrain throw. Oh no, it's a is it a character yeah. throw as well? Yeah. Oh wow, it's, yeah. it's auto. Yeah. So oh man. Now she gets the point and that kills that. Point. Oh, that's that is a very tough. That is a very tough spot. She hasn't. She's gonna. She still gets to move though, right? Like, what am I? Yeah. Yeah. She gets a free move after attack. So. Oh, is she denying the move? Oh, I guess so. So because... she. So she, I think there's a little bit of a misplay there. Oh, yeah. You can't do that, right? Yeah. Are you gonna let him know? Yeah. Um. Um. Oh, so sh uh, it's oh, you, yeah, yeah. Was that from her trigger? Oh no, she didn't ask my permission. Oh, right. They were saying so. Uh, so I, yeah, that I think that's what they're checking. So it's, okay, okay, um, all right. Jin is being like, very, very, very sportsmanlike uh, here. He did yeah. not have to do that. Um, Absolutely. Not. Wow. So, that uh, is a very nice of him. Uh, we're seeing some uh, high quality sportsman, uh, sportsman like conduct from uh, pork roll as usual. The uh, yeah, that was uh, he definitely could have held uh, Nick to saying the you, you missed your trigger. All right, so uh, yes, yes, uh, you you forgoed your trigger and interesting, inter very interesting. Jin is a nice guy, maybe a little too nice, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyway, uh, yes. So that's uh, Gwenum. Gwenum basically gets the activation she wants yeah. there, and uh, that's uh, Nick just putting on a lot of pressure on Jin here. Mirror, it's a it's a web mirror match. This I feel like in the pairings here between the two uh, teams, this was like a coin flip, right? So we'll see if the next uh, <laughs> we'll see if the next matches <laughs> are uh, favored one way or the other. That's what we figure, right? Webs is still one of the dominant faction uh, in the current meta. So if you face webs against each other, uh, it's basically coin flip and uh, gives more leeway to your team in the pairing and matchup process. Because if both player, both webs players are just facing uh, any other list, uh, assuming they each win their pairings, it does force uh, your team to win uh, two out of three of their remaining matches so it gives them uh it gives you less leeway uh for victory to get that three out of five the um so uh simon i forgot to ask i uh how did um who who won the priority roll and who put down first because i never got those details so how did like can you break down like how the pairings ended up going back and forth or do you remember yeah absolutely uh so here um uh, Montreal Shark Tank won the prior role, uh, so we chose here to uh, figure the matchup instead of the terrain. So that meant uh, we would select the most number of matchups, uh, three out of five, uh, and Pork Roll would be picking three out of the five tables. Um, so, yeah. So this ended up, I think, the first... Um, pairings i'm trying to recall which one we did first who'd you put down first <laughs> um i think um i'm trying to remember who we put down first uh, i think it was uh cabal and who was it um i think we put down both cabal and guardians just to force the attrition from the get-go and uh have them throw one of their teams to the wolves um, and then we, uh, I know we traded back and forth, uh, on who was playing what here. Um, and I ended up being one of the last matchups because we tried to force pay to flips into one of their teams. Uh, and that ended up being Wakanda dropped into, uh, foes and me being dropped into, uh, their, uh, their, um, cabal yeah i saw that you had the you of course have the pay to flip plan against cabal so it'll be very interesting to see if you uh, are able to play on your secures okay yeah. so we have a swinging strike from Jin into uh looks like black cat who blocks only one so she takes two and he gets his trigger so let's see where spider uh, spectacular spider ends up going 
All right, he's going to rotate to the middle of the board. All right. Neither player has played any of their tactic cards. I don't know what to say about that. I don't know if that's like, I don't know. I, I think that's very interesting. They, they, did they pick all, did they all pick the wrong cards or was there, I mean, they clearly, I think they missed a good opportunity for either of them to play Masked Menace last round. I think. Yeah, I agree. especially with the amount of violence that occurred this round. You'll probably see both all woke up next turn. Yeah, I agree. Uh, from probably either, if not both, players. Yeah, I think they'll both play next turn. Nick to try and finish it off and close it out, and Jin to try and come back with some big hits. Yeah, because here getting last activation with Spectacular means he can pretty safely um, score an, an additional VP uh, by displacing a model. Uh, and here, Nick is still threatening to score a lot of points. Uh, he would need to bring a friend closer to Zemo or Black Hat uh, if he wanted to consolidate. And I think moving Black Hat further down south, uh, further away from Miles, uh, who is the only extract steal on GN's team, is probably the right call. Here, she could even stagger uh, Spectacular along the way, uh, try to fish for her um, Elusive. Oh, here we see she is getting on the point in one action, and yeah, is go. she going to go? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just slow down the uh, Jin's yep. clawback. Absolutely, and if she gets the elusive here, she gets to go further away from the point, and she has the Zemo reroll. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Luckily, this attack can only deal a maximum of okay. one damage, uh, so it is going to go through, though. Yes, yes. Oh, got to deal with that. Okay. Now we have Miles left to go on uh, Gian's side, which is kind of rough because he's the one holding the paranoia. So if you want him to score a point, um, you're going to have to be either in the middle or on the back point. And this is uh, not looking great, especially because SSM can, uh, Spectacular can probably displace and either tie the point up or deny the proximity. Yeah, the. Uh, it's really interesting. I think you have to put Miles in the Miles in the middle here. Um, but what are you scoring? What is Nick scoring? He's gonna score two secures, three secures, and uh, I, four. He's gonna score seven points well, this round. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, yeah that is so. what I'm seeing. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I think here you can uh, probably just deny Miles. Uh, or uh, try to displace one of the uh, the other characters, uh, either Spectacular or Agent Venom. Uh, but here, the potential double impact webbing uh, yeah. would be able to deny a point if he gets both triggers. That would be pretty crazy. The uh, yeah, I mean, you go into. I guess it doesn't really matter. I here's the thing: is like the angle there looks too. I, I'd be uncomfortable trying to push Spectacular. Uh, my eyes are maybe deceiving me, but I'd go with Agent Venom first. Uh, but just... I don't think he gets there, and that's why he's fishing for Spectacular. Oh, he's out of range of four on Agent Venom? Okay, I thought. So here we're seeing uh, no wilds. Uh, and two blocks thanks to the scoundrels. Okay. But like, worst case scenario, you're just building power on Spectacular, which is uh, still a good place to be in. Like, having a spectacular Spider-Man strike with five power next round is really good. Yes, yeah. Uh, looks like we are getting the impact webbing this Alright, let's see if he has the angle here, because I was nervous about that, but, like, I think I'm sure he does have it. 
even if he doesn't, uh, Gian's still scoring that point yes. uh, thanks to Agent Venom, so it's really not the end of the world. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think you can go for yeah. ridiculous and still. Nick in the chat is right. This this is the this is the second highest scoring possible combination other than uh, scoundrels and senators. Um, I would argue. You think a score uh, paranoia yeah. is probably faster than senators, just because since senators limits movements, um, there's it's easier to score a lot of VPs on yes. uh, on paranoia. I can see that. And also, of course, like it's much easier. You only have, need three characters to score four VPs yeah. uh, on the Paranoia. So there's more often chances to do that. Yeah. Like, assuming both players have two Paranoia each uh, and that they get the proximity point, uh, they still each score three on extracts, which is the same as you would if you have three Senators. Okay, so like, what is Jin scoring here? Jin is scoring two, three VP, seven. All right. So twelve to seven. Uh, this is uh gonna be a big round for him. It's probably the round he need to go his way if he wants to stop Nick from closing the game. Yes, I agree. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> oh man. Uh. It's all it's just a bunch of physical attacks on both sides, though. Gwenum is so tanky. And she's yeah, holding an extract. Oof, three man. rolls, and she's holding an extract. It's going to be real hard to stop her. Uh, and being next to Miles, anyone who wants to go into him uh, will probably have to face her, uh, which is a, the, is a dangerous place to be. All right, let's see if we're going to get Mass Menace here. Each up to three will have worse. It's crazy. Like You can pay one power to get one camera if you're playing like on a more tighter battlefield yeah and then that you pay oh man it's just crazy how it can just i think we're about to get the mask menace question uh because i think both players are reading the card and trying to figure out uh, who plays it first and how so Jin has the option to play it first yeah because yeah. he has and the card states you can't place camera tokens within three of another camera token. So yep. it does not specify yours or your opponent's. Um, <laughs> Interesting. I however, know. the question is, can I just play the card and then throw a camera off in the corner because the card says both of three of a camera token, oh, not an allied camera yeah. token. A lot. Mm, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, do we have like uh, any rulings on the forum? But like, it, it, as it reads, your everything you said is obviously like makes complete sense. I will. Look the up. rulings on the forum just deal with how. You get the power, um, yes. but yeah, I think you know. Like I said, the way the way that we just went through it is the way that the card reads. So, unless you see something else, I would assume that's what it does. Uh, Matt is correct. The only ruling is on the power generation for now. So, uh, I would tend to rule it as he uh, described the card. Like the card says, within three of another camera token. So, it sounds pretty exclusive. Okay. Yes, that's right. I yeah, I think both players can realizing. The yep. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they are the they caught on to the dilemma. Yeah, hopefully for Jean, this will uh, allow him to leverage, um, to leverage the power gain a lot more and keep him in the game. Yeah. Let's see. It's uh, big here now. Let's see if uh, he plays all webbed up, or something like that. So something interesting here too is that, of course, uh, he puts uh, Jin's put his tokens tokens down, and so if he like does something, like attacks into Zemo or or something with like Gwen, I, I'm not saying like that's the best line, but like Gwenum could then attack into 
uh, back into Gwen and then get the power from the camera, like on Jin's turn. Oh. So it's like, uh, there's a lot going on. That's <laughs> there's a lot going. On. Hmm. Uh, another interesting interaction if we look at it. Uh, because the card only says you need to be within three of a camo token, uh, I think you could play Masked Menace as the second player with uh, as the player without Pryo and still reap the benefits. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If, if Nick plays it, throws a camera token in the corner somewhere yeah. or something, or, you know, somewhere that's also that if you from where Jin didn't put his, then uh, the way the card reads... Yep. No, Nick would get power from his cameras as well. That is, that's a spicy interaction. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. Hmm, it's interesting. I think Nick is might have missed it because it looks like he's not playing the card and it's on Jin's clock right now. So, <laughs> Deaton, Deaton is saying the card is broken. <laughs> Bro mechanically. Oh, big time for sure. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Reasons, yeah. The uh, the of course, yeah. The the thing that's popped up recent or like often when this card is discussed is that um, there's an issue of trying to place down a third camera because that would require you to have two range three sticks out in order to uh, to place <laughs> right. it. Because and obviously you're not supposed to do that yeah. in the game. And also. Now imagine if the other player okay let's let's get past that let's just say they figured a way to get three cameras on the board somehow and then the other player goes to play <laughs> goes to play it <laughs> now you have to have three range three rulers and then four and then five <laughs> can you imagine having a stack of five range three rulers just so that you can uh you can get through the ma the the masked menace <laughs> token phase <laughs> The horror on, on Thoris's face is that he sees that happen. It's just a picture. <laughs> yes, yes. That seems a tad ambitious. <laughs> okay. All right, so. It's not nonsense, Magic Nick. Yeah, yeah, no, if, of course, yeah, of course, yeah. It is, it is a cool card, and no, I don't think anyone's going to be like, no, you can't play the third camera it's, it's similar to like bob and his rocket situation where it's like right, technically right. before he was changed uh he would he would die before he actually does his attack and therefore his attack would just end immediately and but it was never played that way uh and yeah the yeah. intent reads pretty clearly but although now there's still a similar if not kind of worse problem on bob because now as is since he dazes himself and loses the rock, the loaded token after the attack is resolved, uh, if you choose to daze him first, he actually technically gets to keep the rocket token. Um, this is clearly not as intended, but Bob has been a um, tough character for the rules for him so far. <laughs> Patrick and Chad is mentioning the trophy. Uh, I did post a picture in on my YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, but I'm gonna show another blurry image of the trophy because I can't seem to ever get this right. And uh, yeah, so you're. Oh, oh, it looks. We're looking oh, at oh, it. There you go. There you go. Almost. Uh, it's like. There we go. That's pretty good. That's probably the best I've ever got it on stream. Nice. And uh, yeah, so the winner of this event after they've played the all the rounds. So there's gonna, there's uh, 15 scheduled matches. Oh, they're just grabbing. Um... And, uh, yeah, and well, so thanks. yes, this is the tro this is the trophy. And um, uh, Simon, since you're here, where what would mm -hmm. uh, what would happen with this thing uh, if uh, your team was successful in the event? Oh, that is a very good question. I think we would probably display it in our local game store uh, if they allow us, of course, um, as it is where we play and where we hang out the most. Uh, or um, yeah, I think that would probably be the place uh to get it if not we'd probably have share custody <laughs> yeah that, that's right that's right if i ever do one of these in the future i'm gonna make a uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little more ambitious this is this was version one it's first trophy i ever made so it is perfect uh, don't so, shame uh, it I, i've got some cool ideas if i ever get to do another team host another team event again but yeah that's right that's right patrick's already on to, on to what i would do with uh 
with uh, in the future. All right, all right. Next back. Uh, get to <laughs> yeah, cool. Nicole in the chat saying is saying what has uh, this that joke has already been made. Uh, you're not the first, but it is a funny. It's good that they <laughs> send it to the losers first to collect the tears. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The uh, I do need. I do. I would like a picture of the team. Uh, of the team holding the trophy at the end, regardless of whichever uh, team comes out on top, just for the the sake of closing. Out the, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. I think it's. Uh, going to be a nice way of wrapping this up. Okay, so looks like uh, Jin is having to go here. This is the first activation of round three. He needs to make some huge moves here. We see Gwen here probably using webline into Gwenum to take her off the points. Do you um yep. do you know why he's doing this? I just don't I don't understand what's the purpose. Uh, probably cover. forcing her to go again or to deny cover. Yeah, de yeah. deny cover seems like the, the... Alright. So now we have spectacular paying for all webbed up. And I, so that was look at that. That was the other that was the other benefit. He's hitting all four of all these characters. Four. Yeah. You have getting over three there. there. That's pretty cool. All right. I dig it. So now the question is, oh, so Gwen's going because she obviously did the pull. Uh, super she did the web line. Web line, yep. But getting the extra dice here might be super relevant. Um, ooh, some Gwen on Gwen action. Let's see who <laughs> is the better Gwen Stacy. Okay, so she's rolling. So she's doing a spender. So she's rolling eight dice then, physical? Yeah. And to Gwenum's four with three rerolls because she is holding an extra. And there is a damage throw trigger here, so we'll see if that matters. At I all. don't think he wants it because then his builder would be nine dice, but that's only range two. Because she naturally gets three if you've already attacked somebody. Right, yes, turn. yes. Ooh, so far three Ooh, wow. blocks before three rerolls. Spider Sense. Uh, blocking three. Uh, doing leadership reroll. Block three, take two. Okay, so she's at half health, and uh, the throw is away on Gwen. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. want to keep her in range two to throw the nine dice builder? Yeah, totally. Here it goes. Do we have anything to uh, stop that? No, I don't think Nick has anything to. I don't think so either. Oh, he got the mass menace power. That was the thing that. Mm -hmm. Here again, this time. <laughs> four, re four dice reroll three is just so freaking tanky. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Uh oh, another somewhat strong hit from Gwenum. Ah, uh, from Gwen and I, I believe I believe Gwenum will block this. Like, Ooh, okay. yeah. So far, she's still looking good. Taking, she dies unless she blocks one more. She still has three rerolls here. Wow. Ooh, needs to block two. Oh. Yeah, he put the slow on the wrong character. Oh, ooh, blocking. Oh my goodness, Five, eight, man. One. Uh, should uh, Simon wow. should vodka blitz? Ha oh, sorry. Should okay, you got it. You got it. The slow. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll figure this out. All right. Yeah. All right. So, Gwenum lives, which is really big. I mean, that's just like. <laughs> It's yes, Jin it's... can't do anything. Like Jin's like he's making a lot of great decisions, but just man, like it's uh, it's just not, it's not working, working out. You know, my thought was um, to start with Adrian Venom and have Gwen play all webbed up to tag Miles and Gwenum. Oh, sorry, Gwen. Yeah, Gwen plays all webbed up to tag Miles and Gwenum. Then Agent Venom swings over and attacks. Uh, um, and then tries to get enough power to beam both of them. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that would have been a pretty interesting call. I agree. 
Yeah. I think, well, without, right, because look at all going out without any rerolls. You know, yeah. assume she had similar kind of rolls. It definitely pays off in the end, I think. But Yeah, it, it seems pretty good. You win too. <laughs> they're, they're... And possibly take out Miles at the same time. They're missing. They're, they're, apparently, they're missing the rules because they're just uh, they're having a blast in the in the game room. So, all right. So, so <laughs> players are having fun uh, here on Nick's side. I am expecting to see Aunt May's with wheat cakes. Um, yeah, that too, Nick. Also, the no matter the cost, just to get the age of Ben and Beam right off the bat. Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> First thing, wheat cakes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, healing one here, especially on uh, Gwenem, is pretty big. I mean, um, he he really needed to take somebody out because he's just gonna clear them all. I assume. No reason not to, really. Yep. And no pancakes for Zemo because he is not a web warrior. Okay. So. Yeah, the 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 that not paying off is gonna cause some big problems for Jin here. Yeah, I agree. It puts him in a pretty awkward position. Uh, here we are seeing. Oh. oh, there's the shaky hands I mentioned earlier. Yep. We are seeing probably another all webbed up. <laughs> oh man! Uh, I think this yeah, is relevant. As he gets back, as as he gets back, to, gets back to Jin. You'll see another uh, weak kick. Yeah, I haven't played enough web wear mirrors to to see this interaction uh, very often. <laughs> Yeah, Web Warriors mirrors have uh, cameras flying over the place, wheat cakes being thrown around. Classic Web Warrior shenanigans. So you guys were both at ACO. Is there any uh, sort of highlights or any fun things that happened there that were uh, might not have been on stream or anything like that? Um, yeah, for my part, I saw, uh, I was playing, uh, a game right next to Sooner, uh, during the, uh, main event and, uh, seeing him being tabled by Cyclops, uh, on top of round four was honestly pretty impressive and, uh, something to be, uh, really like you had to be there moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard, um, <laughs> I heard that, uh, in that game that uh that he took zero damage on round one and he was tabled by round four. <laughs> oh my can you imagine yeah. <laughs> that's just that's just absolutely wild yeah at one point i remember uh as i was wrapping up my game uh cyclops on the opposing side of the table had three hammers <laughs> oh my goodness. and um let me tell you, those eight die builders with the speed of sight uh are gonna daze models um <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely wild that's crazy so yeah cyclops was uh doing some real impressive work there um it, it was really funny to watch <laughs> oh man yeah that's uh that's that is pretty uh that's pretty crazy and there was that uh the weapon x uh, i think the, like the big thing that i saw was that the weapon x player made it into the top eight yes uh, uh actually cool. being nick's uh nick here's only uh, defeats on in the main day. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, that WebEx player couldn't make it back for the um, for day two, so he had to drop. But then sooner was in a was in ninth, so another WebEx player stepped up and took the place. Yeah. Yep. How? And honestly, it's a pretty impressive flex being able to just play an event, do three one going into top eight, then dropping. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> It does give me some nice bragging rights. 
<laughs> yeah, the uh, um, Simon, the of course the game you had on stream where you came back from a pretty significant deficit was a <laughs> was a very entertaining watch. I, uh, nice. I was yeah, so that was pretty that was pretty pretty cool to see that happen. It's always fun to see those types of games that go completely one way and then just completely swing the other. Yeah, and unfortunately for Joe Pape, another member of the Pork Roll Protocols, uh, this has been a pattern between oh. uh, him and I. I think uh, two years ago, I did kind of pretty close to the exact same thing in the semifinals uh, to him again. Like, it was something of 14-8, and I managed to, like, steal the game from him again. Who uh, who won the, um, the uh, um, ACO last year? I was Rob, who is my oh. round one opponent for the uh, uh, Rebel Panel. Oh, here. there's more story here. There's two ACO winners head to head. Then, right? Is that how that you were yep. the first? You were two years ago. Yep, exactly. So this is going to be an interesting match. Yeah, especially against Cabal with Thanos. Yes, Chewie is streaming that tomorrow, right? Uh, six, I think it's at six p.m. Eastern. Or sorry, is it what time? Seven p.m. Eastern. Yeah, I think so. Um. Yeah, and uh, also uh, against uh, Cabal with X-Men. Uh, I played this matchup uh, against Mike Domboise from Strike Better Podcast. Right. And uh, went pretty close to tabling him with Cyclops, and <laughs> he was real afraid. Uh, I think I KO'd his Thanos up around three, wow. uh, which is a scary place to be if you're playing Cabal. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so Cyclops has been uh, doing a lot of work at uh, this weekend at ACO. Yeah. All right. So who do we have here? Who what? Uh, who just attacked? Gwenum just uh, must have attacked. Then she's measuring. I would presume so. This looks like a is it a spender? Jen's looking for a fallback option, which is not available. To uh, I think we are. Yeah, we are looking at a spender here. Okay. To have Gwenum heal herself. She does. She only heals one though. It looks like what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, as long as she's pushing oh. a damage. Yep. No, now no damage because uh, Gwen blocked four. Ghost Spider blocked four. She's playing fallback to get onto the point. Pretty interesting. She is injured though, so so it's not gonna score an actual point unless she is uh on by on it by herself. And um, what am I? What do I want to say? I want to say that Gwen. Oh, I guess there's nothing. To... Oh, she also now gets cover against Gwenum if uh yeah if she gets attacked. So there's a little bit of survivability now. I agree, but I think yeah, I like the uh, console. Yeah, yeah, I like the consolidation of VPs here. Uh, just putting yourself in a position to score out the game this round. Yeah, and with more activations than Jin, uh, his spectacular Nick having spectacular being able to just move, move, throw. Any of yep. any of Jin's characters is just like uh, can just be the game winning the game winning move. So let's see. Looks like he's opting to just prevent Gwen from scoring the points since she's already activated. Yeah, this is threatening two VPs and potentially throwing the size two into Gwen to squeeze in some damage. Yeah. Or throwing Gwen out of the point. You also get the, you get the power re semi-refunded with uh, Mass Menace, so that's pretty handy. Assuming damage goes through, of course. We are seeing a Gwen throw here. Just to make sure she doesn't threaten to score VP. Yeah, with uh, Gian's spectacular being slowed and staggered, I don't think he will have a big impact this round. So that leaves pretty much Agent Venom and Miles, who is about as far as he can get. Oh, he just so he opted to just throw Gwen. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Medi that... The medium throw is like that's pretty far for especially when you have to move <laughs> slow. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. And this also means that Gwenum is uh, scoring two VPs by herself. 
uh, which I think is you just force Gene to spread his uh, forces thin to try to stop him from scoring. Okay, so we have a, a slide in here. He's looking for he needs to get one power here, and then he can beam though both of those characters who are both holding extracts. He also has access to no matter the cost here, yeah. uh, which could very well help them. Um. No, why seven die? Oh, against Zemo because he's still slowed. Uh, yep, yeah, that ought to get Zemo. Ooh, yeah. uh, at least it's looking yeah, good. Uh, yeah, that gets Zemo. All right, boom! You get you just got loaded up on power here with four power because of Bass Menace. Dropping the extract. Hmm, interesting. The day's tokens don't work on uh, the character models. They work only on the cards. Uh, I, like, I don't know why I'm like, I care about that. It doesn't really matter. It's funny. All right, okay. So he's picking up the piece, uh, the paranoia. He's not going to take damage because he's within two of his own Miles Morales. Uh, no, that is uh, because he's within two of Spectacular. This is Oh, nice my spot. bad, my bad. I meant to say Spectacular. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. Well, Patrick. it is a mirror match, and they are playing uh, at least uh, <laughs> two of the same characters. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's just four Spider-Men on, uh, on the battlefield right now. So it's a little... Two Venoms, two Spider-Men, <laughs> two Gwen Stacys. Gwen Stacys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. I think Jean is checking he if he can throw the size three cargo at Black Cat. Um, yeah, this looks in. Yep, definitely can do that. Uh, Black Cat would need to block two here to live because that's four damage coming in. She does have the ability to pr play Brace for impact. I will be right back. Yeah, I think if he does throw, you do play that brace, right? You, just, you don't want to take the chance. I'd not risk it, force the attack. And I think, uh, if I had to guess, I think Gian's debating whether to do the spender or the throw. Yeah, I'd um, say so. I think here I'd probably opt for uh, the spender, just because uh, you can force... If you force brace out, uh, it puts uh, a big onus on Agent Venom to uh, just days or five against three. He's uh, he's not sure. Well, sorry. Uh, did he spend the power? Why is he at zero power? Yeah, uh, he threw the cargo. I think into Gwen. Oh, it's still on the board though. Is that what I was that what I'm seeing? Did he throw? Oh, we have a brace. We have, of course we had a brace play. That's I think uh that's why have... that's why no damage has gone through on Black Cat and now he's attacking yeah, Black Cat. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Well lot fixed. The terrain is now gone. Alright, so he's looking to get a good roll through with Venom here. Uh and is he, is he on the point? He's not on the point. Okay. No, he is not. Nope. <laughs> He's being a little silly. All right, here we go. Big attack. Five against three. No crits. So three. Black Hat just needs to block the one. Ooh, and she doesn't. And goes Whoa, down. Whoa, perfect roll. Wow, there it so goes. Now, you're going to get another power. You're going to get four power on Venom here then. Yep. Yep. And so that's pretty good. And he's gonna. He already. Did he already pick up a piece? He did. Okay. Yeah. So he's got to just put this down for someone else. Uh. I mean, 
Miles on Nick's side doesn't have power. Spectacular's not holding one though. So he could he could probably rotate Spectacular over and grab it. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Um because Spectacular from GN side uh is probably gonna be unable to displace him, uh being staggered and needing just the one power. And being able to only get the one power. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So, um, anyway, yeah. So let's see here. Yeah. Nick, Jen is looking to place this down in a spot that is good for him, but, uh, okay. All right. Let's see what happens. Uh, Matt, yeah, you were at ACO and you played a bunch of games. Was there any games in particular that, uh, stood out to you after the event, uh, finished? Well, I was, um, <clears throat> glad that I got to play sooner again. Uh, we hadn't played since NashCon. The last time I played was NashCon two or three years ago. Okay. Um, so good, great to actually get to play him again. And, uh, I finally got to play Ben, right, man. Right. right. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen him at like eight, eight events and we ha haven't played yet. Wow. So it was good to get a game with him. Uh, we haven't ran into each other. You were on stream with him, and, right? I think that was round one, actually. Yeah, that was round one. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, he's, he's always a great opponent and, um, uh, you know, all the things that uh, the big surprises that Simon already said, had mentioned before, right? Just like <laughs> just people keep getting tabled or, or, you know, Simon coming back um, or even, you know, that game that Simon that you almost won against Mike, that was pretty, pretty uh, good to hear about. You know, I think you were what one health away. Was that, am I correct? Yeah, I think I was, if I recall, I was one health away from tabling him uh on round six so we knew it was the oh, very wow caught it out to the very very is end. that the um was that the what game was that that was round four or something uh that was my round three against round mike bomb walls um oh, okay it was that one okay yeah it was a pretty pretty spicy game uh he clawed it out uh but at least <laughs> i gave him a good fight which uh, yeah no losing by one fun. by one health is uh, is like it could have gone either way kind of thing <laughs> Yeah. And there were lots of games over the weekend, um, you know, that kind of came down to the wire, which is great to see in a yeah. you know pretty competitive event like that. Yeah, agreed. Like there were a lot of games hearing from either players or watching that went to round six, seven, some round eight, like really took <laughs> uh, some time wrapping up and putting uh, like uh, putting on good shows for all players. Yeah, that's great. So Miles attacking yeah. Venom. Venom didn't, uh, interesting, didn't, Venom didn't pay a power to remove the slow. Ooh, that is rough. And he's uh, paying for that's it. That's a big bit there. Ooh. Yeah, uh, full six damage. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Red side dice, pretty hot today. <laughs> okay. Uh, why is Agent Venom rolling three dice? Um, you want to check that? Yeah. There it goes. They caught it. I'm glad they caught. It. They're catching. You're, we're catching these quick. Uh, so six. So it takes, oh yeah, they got, yeah, of course. Ooh, Ooh, blocking four, but that still lets Miles. Uh move and pick up the disturbance so i think that uh, jin made uh he missed a trigger there uh superpower lets him pay a power to remove conditions it's like ant may it's like it's better than ant may's weak eggs right you get to yeah he's got a built-in but yeah. funnily yeah. enough nick didn't roll two additional dice going into agent venom he just rolled the regular four. Oh, did he are uh, you sure he web swung though did he web swing he had no power so, um so he did roll so he did oh he rolled he had crits convert into extra. He got six successes on four dice. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's just so silly. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. Oh man. This game is kind of, this game is pretty wild sometimes. Yeah. I kind of like here running away from spectacular uh, as a, doesn't let him uh, build the power to pick up the disturbance and pretty much guarantees that um, uh, Nick's Spectacular is going to be able to pick it up. 
Yeah, this is a tricky. It's a tricky spot now for um, Jenny. Doesn't have any way to pick up that spurn. Oh yeah, uh, he can move and, and do I a swinging strike, right? That's pretty much his only option. No, because he is staggered. He only has oh. the one action. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Oh, that is. He's horrible. got two. <laughs> yeah, and... as long as he stays outside of three, right? He can't swing a strike and get the elusive trigger. That is correct. Uh, so he has no way of building power and picking up the disturbance. Ooh, that is unfortunate. Um, but, he, oh yeah, so I was going to say, like, Buddy can go last. Um, but yeah, I don't but know. I, That's not gonna that be game that. is <laughs> really running away from GN. Yeah, there's this big of a disparity. It's not going last, isn't that? Yeah. Great. The Spectacular, so... So spectacular on uh, Nick's side, just double walks, s jumps, or web swings, and grabs the paranoia. Yep, and scores functionally two points because he'll be on the ambush and picking up the disturbance. Yes, and the uh, and Gwenham and, and Miles are scoring three points on that side. So yeah, I think he's going to be looking at body blocking here potentially. Um, I don't know if that's going to like two two medium moves and a uh, and a range three places is. is crazy it's a crazy yeah. amount of um distance movement yeah obviously that uh that, that stagger from black cat from last round was uh paid off Super big time big. but yeah i think here if you're nick um What's he has five power, so yeah, I think you just honestly go pick up the disturbance and the ambush. It is two VPs, and it puts a big, um, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on. So it's so it's no longer two VPs because spectacular is on the point. It's just one VP now. Oh, that's true. But it is so it is game winning unless Miles is able to swing and is able to. Oh, I guess. Uh, um. Nick's to go. Nick is to go, right? Yeah, Nick's going. Yeah. I think they're probably just talking. Like based on what I'm seeing here, they're just talking through the points. Um, yeah. He has to. He has to hit a wild on Gwenham to stall this game out, right? And then displace her off the point. Yeah. That. Uh. No, I don't think that does it. Just because. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they'll both. No, it does. It does do. That. Oh no, you're right. Because he wouldn't have the extra VP from the. Uh, paranoia. Yes. So they're going to score at three. Yeah. But yes, because Spectacular moving over. Hold on. He doesn't need to pick up the paranoia. He just needs to stay where he is. He just needs to stay on the secure and he'll yeah, still he's score one. There, right? Yeah. So he can just, he could just have just stayed there in theory. I think if he gets there in one move, uh, you can actually just throw. Uh, oh, good point. Yeah. So he didn't get there in enough moves. But hold on. Oh, if you so hold on, you just you can throw spectacular into venom and you'll do damage and gain power, and then you pick up the paranoia, right? Did he miss that? Uh, he hasn't played Mask Menace. Oh, he so. should have. Then he should have. Yeah, played that's it. Jin's Mask Menace. He should have played it. Yeah, God. So there you go. Him not playing it there. Uh, I mean, obviously. I, I mean, I think he wins no matter actually already. But is he not picking? Oh, up he didn't the... pick it up. Hmm. That's uh. That seems like a miss. Uh, why wouldn't yeah. you? I agree. Um, okay, well, it's it's going another round, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see what happens. Um, one, two, three, four. Well, so far he's going four, so unless GN just where's the, where's the fourth? Oh no, you're right. It's, it's yeah. tied because okay. uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think he's figuring. I think Nick might have done the math wrong. Is my guess, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure. A lot of mental math having to play web warriors, right? Play against them and and play them. So it's like a double brain burn kind of situation. Oh, for sure. All right. 
Ashley, Ashley, I've got about. I think we've got an ETA of about twenty to twenty-five minutes, uh, and I'll be, uh, I'll be done. All right, just so you know. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> All right, so uh, Miles, here we go. Web swing move, and is he going to move again? He's got the movement tool out. He's got a short tool. I wonder what's going on. What's he thinking? I think he, moving on the point does nothing. You have to attack. Yeah. <laughs> we have, uh, yeah, he has to attack to, dis to get stop VPs at this point. Got to go for it. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else to do? You, if you get Gwenum here, flipper. If you flipper or something, there's nothing. I mean, uh, okay. So there is a miracle throw. There's a miracle play here where you ki attack Miles, and yeah, you hit the wild, the you, and you get one shot Miles, and then you also get the throw into Gwenum, who w also misses all of her dice and then dies. Which is unlikely, but very, but possible. If you did that, uh, you'd score what you uh, it'd score one point for Jin, and that's it. <laughs> uh, two because he has two extracts. Uh, potentially even three if Spectacular is within two of Venom, and I think he is. So that would be three VPs. <laughs> sure. All right, guys. All right. Don't don't uh, don't listen to her. All right. <laughs> all right oh he's moving oh, he's moving he's moving interesting uh not uh not i don't see what the math is here on this you're still not there's no vp change so uh i disagree he is tying that point because miles is injured oh shoot i was missing that all right I, okay that was that was definitely uh so that is gonna be two on next side to three on Gians. All right. Wow. So it's a four point. Now it's a four point game. Yep. Um, and I think that's a pretty significant mistake from Nick. All You're right. not getting the extra VP from picking up the extract. Um, and yeah, then, definitely. Yeah, and is potentially going to cost him uh, a lot. He does start with Pryo here and uh, Mask Menace available to him. All right, so can Nick, or is it a good idea for Nick to pick up the Paranoia and double walk? Uh, or um, is the game too much up for grabs here? I'm not sure. I think I'd rather. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> All right. Oh well, hold on. What? Did, oh, there, there goes the tokens. All right. So now, I feel, I feel like this is like playing Mass Menace on like the last round of the game is like such a. It's like, it's very interesting. I have not obviously I've not played the card at all. So, um, you're not like I. I think of the card as like a snowballing card, where like uh the first chance you get to play it is like probably good, but. Uh, doesn't yeah. Jin's uh, yeah spectacular have a to have a token? Where is he? Uh, no, it's right under him actually. Oh yeah, no, he didn't pick it up. He opted. Nick did not pick it up, and yeah. Jin, he couldn't pick it up because he did, had zero power and nobody to attack to gain power, so Jin could not pick up the piece. So who has priority? Sorry, uh, uh Nick. Nick has uh, priority. Nick has priority. This game. I think here, if I'm Nick, I want to try to get rid of um, Miles here. You have access to uh, Marks for Death, who uh, someone else than Gwenum and Miles can both uh, play on Gian's Miles. And then she can do Spender into Builder. So this would be 7 die into 7 die, uh, denying Miles rerolls to get him, uh, which is still like somewhat likely, and if you're playing Mask Menace, uh, she is bound to gain two power uh, for her throw. What are we seeing? We're yeah, seeing max, we are, three, we max three power Mask Menace. Okay, he's putting out three cameras, guys. Let's see how he can do it. <laughs> Interest. Okay, yeah, okay, so they... Uh, 
<laughs> this card is so funny. Did he pay three? He paid two. He paid for two cameras. One on Gwenum and one on uh, Black Hat. <laughs> okay. Oh, so look at that. He's using two threes right there, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, man, because he's using a three off of Black Hat and a three, off, and in theory, a three off of the camera. I, I mean, okay, it doesn't really matter. I don't know what I don't know what you're saying, Ashley. Can no one try to get Lucas to play a game tomorrow or talk to you while people are playing a game tomorrow so we can watch the boys? <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> The um, I, I b actually both of the games being streamed for this event tomorrow are being streamed by other people. So we've got Chewy streaming uh, at the first game. I think that's at seven p.m. Right, uh, Simon? Yeah. Seven p.m. And then yeah, at nine. Oh, I for, crap! I wish I had it up here. I have it. Actually, I do have it. So that's uh, tomorrow is uh, Mike Dambois versus TG Lord, and that's at nine thirty. And Mike. Uh, Waylon, so the captain Waylon. of the other team, is going to be it's streaming that, and you're joining him with Rob, and who will uh, who who you will have been playing two hours prior, <laughs> yes, or whatever. So... Oh, just gone off the game. <laughs> All right, that's pretty fun. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So you know you'll be getting your fair amount of trash talk there. We'll, we'll see. Well, it'll be fun. It'll all it'll be uh it'll be a good time. I'm sure. I'm looking forward to checking out the streams and being a, a viewer on uh on the side. Nice. So. Um All right. <laughs> okay. All right. See ya, Ashley. I'll be Good night, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> All right. So who goes now? I think Zemo's probably a solid candidate uh, to go into either as uh, spectacular or Agent Venom. Man, going taking out Agent Venom would be pretty big for the damage output that Jin needs. I think that uh, yeah, <laughs> White Claw. All right, uh, yeah. I think I would still prefer uh, when I'm going into here. Miles, but I think we are looking at Zemo. Zemo Spender and Master Swordsman. He's rolling charge. Charge. Yeah, yeah, I see. You're right. He's getting to. Paid for Master Swordsman a tad too early, because technically you don't have to pay for it until after your move action is fully resolved and you're into the attack sequence. But yeah. ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Uh, he'll, it's just like... <laughs> it's uh, more of just like, I'd rather not touch my card twice. And uh, he's like he's, he's trying to minimize his, his mouse movements. He's optimizing his mouse movements by only going to the character card once. <laughs> Ooh, two crits is a good start on the Master Swordsman. Oh, yeah, that is a very strong... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yep, yeah. that probably gets Ooh, him. That's uh, huge. He's doing Master Swordsman rerolls, and if one converts, it gets him. There we go. Uh, yeah, that just gets Agent Venom here. Uh, that's right. that's like the, that's the show. No kill like overkill. Seven on five. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, four rerolls though. So those are that's not. A, it's, a, it's <laughs> man. Yeah, that is see, pretty big. I, yeah. I feel like I see more seven on fives and six on fours than I ever have before. I don't know what's going on, but it feels like it just happens so often. <laughs> yeah, and I think here you could even uh, there's an argument to do uh, March for Death on Spectacular to get him off the board, and just denying two activations here with only Zemo uh, would be really backbreaking. Did he get all the power? He got. Did he get all the power he needed, especially from the bonus? It's so hard to see. He got five. Yeah, he got all. He got all. all. He got all four. Plus the map. Yeah. So here we go. We're we're going to spectacular. He's not paying for mark for death. No, so let's see if he, he can punch through it again. Spender oh, though. Dude, look at uh, that with... roll. Oh my goodness, dude. Nick is oh. his dice are just wow. disgusting. Oh, that uh, is. He's got four rerolls left. 
Uh, still oh, one reroll, showing six. six. Dude, seven on five again? A six. Okay, six on close, six. close, close, close. Is he dead already, though? Six on... No, he's not, I guess. Oh, blocking he's three. Three. Taking three and bleed. Three and a bleed. Oh, my God. Wow, Jin's, uh, Jin's spectacular. Can't catch a break, eh? He's, he's basically pseudo-staggered again. Oh, man. All right. That's brutal. That was wild. Third, he just scored. He just rolled a... Uh, Seven, 13 successes on 10 dice. Man. <laughs> on 11, but yes. <laughs> uh, 11. Oh, did he roll a spender or something? Yeah. Oh, that was a spender. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 13 on 11. All right. So it's, oh, so the, the second one was only six for six. So, yes. the, so not, cr not too <laughs> crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. More like half ass Spider Man, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, we are seeing wheat cakes now from Jean. All right, sadly, there... only clear slow. Yeah, at least the heal, though, on Spectacular. Does put him in a spot yeah, where right. he, he's lives. Dangerous. he can take two, yeah. he can do two actions and still be alive at the end of his activation. Um, all right, so I think we're we're in like double double days every activation kind of territory, right? Or like basically every attack has to put someone down from full. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. So he's picking up with spectacular. Who who now he takes a doesn't he take a damage there? No, because oh, he's to have agent venom. That was the measurement, right, right. Okay, yeah. Um Yeah, the clocks are have are, are pretty even now. I think that I mean both players I'm sure feel like I don't I wonder what they feel like now. Like fifteen minutes feels like a, a lot of time watching the game. Right, each for each player, but maybe for them, maybe they're they're rolling faster, or playing faster than they would. I, I don't know. It's interesting. All right. Seeing a builder, uh, gainer from SSM going into a one uh, spectacular, the other spectacular Nick's. Don't find nothing. Uh, the full rerolls. A classic, uh, six die, no successes. Neither, neither of these were pretty hot. Demo reroll. Wow. Blocking one, taking two. Yeah, that's uh, Jen needed more than that. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh man, this is uh, this is pretty. This is crazy. Nick, uh, Nick has a good squad here. They're all so fast. Look at all his. All his characters are just so fast. I mean, both obviously both sides have this have a lot of speed, but Zemo, that damage output from Zemo was incredible, and that Gwenum, that round one on Gwenum just like set up his entire team up. He's doing the Zemo bunker that we've seen a few players uh, utilize recently. That we've seen so many times throughout the history of this game. Because Zemo One is a core box character, he's been out for as long as the game has been. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? It's kind of wild that he's like <laughs> still not <that> good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, there's the tier list recently. It's like S tier Zemo, S tier. Like it's crazy that um, he hasn't been. It's crazy that he hasn't been touched at all. Like of course, yep. like uh, the, the most obnox the, the most pronounced thing on his card, I think, is the long move. Like it just doesn't make sense yeah. thematically uh i don't think i don't know I'd, that's what i hear <laughs> it just seems like I he's like a normal person isn't he other than like super reflexes and fast he's i mean maybe he's fast but is he as fast as uh like Gwen quicksilver. And, yeah quicksilver exactly it's just feels weird he's faster than quicksilver like right he can he can go further on the board <laughs> i think with uh when they're holding stuff i think that's the anyway Ooh. 
two successes, uh, this will leave a spectacular alive. Okay, so here's what I'm here's what I'm watching for though. I'm watching for the hit wild trigger, that will move him within range of Gwenum to get them hit him. <laughs> That's what I'm watching for now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it happen. All right. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Now he's running. He's going the wrong way. He's going the wrong way. I I don't know if he even had the range. Oh man. It maybe it does. I don't think it does. Now that I say that, I was looking at the green spectacular and thinking that's what was happening. Trying to figure out if there's anything that will help him here. Yeah, he needed he needed a daze there. If he got yeah, two I, dazes, would that because have now it? he's going to take one from the bleed and moving next to terrain and his allies just opens him up to have uh, Nick Spectacular throw him on the terrain and pick up the scenario points. Yeah, there's nothing really to be done here. I think there's also another avenue for Nick. If he wants to be like really obnoxious, have Black Hat move and steal um, just... bunch money. I was seeing that too. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just, yeah, there's, there's really it's... so many problems here. Miles on zero power is going to have a hard time um, building power on Gwenum Specta on Gwenum against Gwenum Miles or Black Hat, and if he then just uses no matter the cost, he exposes himself to just dying. Yeah. All right. See you later, Patrick. Thanks for joining the stream. I think we're gonna see a spectacular just move up, throw yep. the other spectacular into the point and steal his lunch. Ooh. And I bet with the amount of throws Nick did during this game, Gene really regrets not bringing Grace here. Yeah, I can I can see that. Fall back. Drop fallback, maybe. All right. So let's see what we have. Uh, he's just going to grab the piece. He doesn't take any damage because he's within two of his friends. And then he's going to place, pay two power to get a place into the deal. So that was only one action so far. So he's going to do his second action to run into the corner. And I think that is the right play and the right time to do so. And I think there's not a lot of things a slowed Gwen on no power and Miles on no power can do to stop yeah. on Nick from scoring two. Yep, yeah, I agree. Black Cat is ready to steal too if you keep anyone close. If you keep yep. Miles, yeah. So there's, there's no. Like Gwenum has like, Gwenum's tanky, got three health left still, but super tanky. Yeah, like It's just like, and if you attack Miles. Uh, hold on. If you attack Miles, Gwenum can attack you back. Lots of problems. There's too many problems, and that's. So let's see. Let's see what uh, if what Jin does here. If he he could pass, I guess. Let's see. So, but tough. I don't. I don't see any uh, outs here. Miles can't. Even if Miles like does anything significant, he can't pick up any secures, or extracts. And then Nick could react and pick the extract back up with uh with Black Cat or Miles. Yeah. No, I think we are going to see the black cat stealing his okay. lunch money. Or at least that's what Gene's checking. <laughs> yeah. um, Alright, so what's like the best case scenario here? This would be Jin one-shotting Miles, uh, Nick's Miles. Yeah, and then one-shotting getting Gwenum. Yeah, so he's got three power. The game. Because Zemo scoring two, black cat 
uh, getting the extra proximity VP and spectacular. Yeah. One. So even if you did, if you and if you got both of them, it still, still wouldn't be that. enough. Yeah, because then Gwen can't can't impact both Black Hat and Baron Zemo. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing the players typing, and All I right. think they are. Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right. The, this was not what I was expecting from the players, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're right. They're um, playing. all right. <laughs> all right. Yes. Well, yes. I I always say try to play to your outs, and uh, I think Gian is doing just that. He's trying to figure out if he has a way out of this. Yeah. It's a tough. I think we're back to uh are we back in a spot where you one shot miles into a throw into Gwenum? I think so and I don't even think it's enough. Yeah, okay, alright, he's going into Gwenum. Alright. Choosing violence. Four against four with three re rolls. <laughs> oh wow, alright. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh so. yeah. This is probably not what you want to see if you're a Jean here. So yeah, the, so the only mathematical out that I see is you got a you attacked into Miles, you one shot Miles with a throw into a one shot on Gwen, get the power, and then one shot Black Cat to like hop over and one shot Black Cat, and then Gwen impact webbing Zemo. Hey, even then, it should have to one shot Zemo on the impact webbing. Uh, I, I, okay, so that didn't help. Yeah, she blocked just it blocked all. it. Like a champ. Again. That was Miles, the second action. Then Zemo just runs to the corner. Uh, He's already the... gone. He oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Black Hat just steals his piece. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. There's too much. There's too many problems. And not enough solutions. Because now, even if Gwenum wants to be like super obnoxious, she can just move, throw, go spider, medium, and uh, go for it. Oh, I think here we are seeing uh, March for Death on Miles. Yeah. So he loses stealth. Uh, so that's interesting. And loses and cannot modify his defense dice. Uh... <laughs> uh, Gwenum doing some work again. Uh, showing three, so dealing two to Miles, and oh, gaining four power, and now uh, that opens a spender into Miles. Brutal. Uh, so far just two. Ah, uh, but Miles takes it, and this gives enough power to Gwenum to throw Miles. <laughs> uh, uh, do you throw into your own miles? Where your own miles has has no uh, has not. I think damage. I would throw it into yeah. your own yeah, miles. Just, just it would. Okay, so it looks like Jin's just wrapping it up for for the. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, we'll be jumping into their chat uh, in a second. Went into miles. Yeah. No rules needed. Just flat out blocks it. Okay. So Jin scoring. Uh, so hold on. Are we guess? Uh, let's see if Nick. How ruthless Nick is. If he wants to get more <laughs> VPs or not, or is he calling it? I'm. I'm the type of player where, if the if I get to sixteen, I do not uh, care about playing out the rest of the game if my opponent also agrees that that is the case fair but everyone plays uh, everyone closes up the game differently so we'll see what we'll see what happens here they might want to roll it out
All right. Uh, so yeah, we're doing a yeah, we're doing a, a place to do six dice in the miles. Looks like. Oh, or, All right, he's placing there so that he can rotate to where Gwen is and stop her from getting a VP if uh, if he is able to get, get Miles. So that is stone cold. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. All right. Uh, getting the final one into Miles. Yeah. Okay, picks up the piece and he's staying there. He's just gonna stay there. Yeah, fair. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then. Uh, Gwen's already gone. Black Cat Ghost stays there. All right, so then they, they're going to score it out then. So we've got, what do we have here? Three, four, five, six more points for Nick. Seven for Nick. I am counting four extracts and two secures plus the extra VP. Um, no, he has three. Oh, does he have all four? Yeah. All right, let's, uh, jump, in, let's jump in there, chat. Yeah. All right. For paranoia and like mid extract because I know she can move, tap, hope she can make some power. Sometimes she throws people off point. Sometimes she one shot people. That's why I like yeah. to bring her. I don't know mm. if she'll make my list forever. Right now, I do like her. Uh, we'll stop the whole pack. Yeah, but there's not there's not any dice fixing with her, so you're really just like yeah, lying yeah, on the five sure. vanilla dice to just do it. You know, one one hundred percent. But I must admit, like. With playing miles and everything, I have a new respect. Sometimes you just throw four dice, mm -hmm. let it let, let it rip, and you never know what's gonna happen. So oh that's yeah, why, that's why I bring her. Uh, she's good also into uh, what's his face, um, Ultron. A lot of people are hyper aggressive with the grunt, and grunt are great for her to farm. Oh yeah, no, I used to play shield. Yeah, the grunts are absolutely amazing. The four dice just pop off. Uh, is everybody here? I guess. Yes. Yeah, we're here. Thank you for letting us stream the game. That was. Uh, really interesting, uh, Jin. You unfortunately lost Deadpool on round one, which kind of set off the entire uh, yep. game. Um, yeah, uh, um, I missed a, a crucial fallback because because uh, of the timing of uh, when. Because and we confused this too, and, and that. And thank you, uh, Simon, for clearing that up. Uh, so there was a point where uh, Gwenna moved. Moved. You know, I, I should have just said it's like, hey, I would like to just you know fall back. Uh, in some direction, and I think I, if I could position myself so that um, maybe I'd be away from the point or away from a throw, like there'd be a, a way to sort of stop that. But I think not bringing brace, I felt like that. I felt that more so than other on this one. I, I figured there'd be limited was, throws in uh, so webwears. Yeah, I was so surprised and bring it. Uh, I was surprised. Like at one point, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, he doesn't have brace, so it, it changed my whole mentality for some things I was doing. I was mm -hmm. like, I, in my head, like no matter the cost, I, I, bl I blink and I said, hey, that's brace for impact. That's, that's on me. But I said, oh yeah, he doesn't have brace, so yeah, it did change how I approach, I approach the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, losing Deadpool to very early was, was just rough, you know. It is what it is uh, at that point. <laughs> yeah, there was an instance in the middle of the game when Gwenpool, you had a, you accidentally flip flopped in the sequencing of the throw. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jin, I, I th from what we saw, you allowed Nick to correct the act of the sequencing on that, which uh, props. That's uh, uh, very sportsman like of you. Not uh, uh, if if that was how it happened, and you gave let him take that back, then. Then um, you are a better man than me, I guess. <laughs> okay. But um, but anyway, vodka. Let's uh, do, uh, Simon. Do you have any questions for the players on the game, or uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, good job from both players. Uh, Gian, on your side, I was curious. Uh, how? Um, what was your approach going into this game without uh not having prio? Uh, what was your game plan going into the mirror? Here? So I figured we can get parity on the uh, extracts because there's four, right? So even if um, Nick goes and gets one first, you know, there's still like three others and we can sort of sequence it and hopefully, you know, cover our bases, like which ones we can pick up. I put Deadpool kind of like here because he, he doesn't have wall crawlers, so he can go just walk to either Paranoia in the center to get one. Um, he heals it back and he's got a couple of rerolls as well to keep him alive, which usually has been pretty good despite having, having four health. <laughs> Um, 
it's 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 surprising what two rerolls can do for a four health character. One hundred percent. But I'm yeah, like you said, I'm surprised though. You left me the two medals. It saved me like one wound on one of my character. I was sure like that pool will walk in the middle and be on a point versus being in no man's land. I, on the, on the so I was more okay with that because I deployed Agent Venom in center. So it was like great. I have two targets. I can shoot now in the center. Yeah, you know? for sure. One hundred percent. I mean, but th there was no way for me around Agent Venom. But yeah, I mean, it was more you like saving me one wound on one of my character that it's huge i mean mm. with only five hp mo uh, across the board except uh Gwenham, that's kind of huge in my in my book but i didn't complain yeah, yeah no um if there may have been a better sequencing for that um but yeah then i went to go grab this one out here and maybe i should have just like yeah had let you have um spider-man come on get this that means he doesn't get this point back here unless you want to put someone back here as yep. well um but I just figured that it's like I figured I would fall behind slightly in the maybe by one secure like initially just so that it sets me up so that you know we can attrition like the rest of the the folks and it was working for a little bit I want to say um not being able to activate ancient venom I mean it's two zemo attacks so I think that was just like you know yeah. zemo attacks are amazing uh, especially when you unlock the skulls he's an amazing well, warrior yeah you're you're too you're too kind we can go with stupid and busted <laughs> okay he is perhaps above the curve let's say no 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 he, he's, he's so he's so high on their miles that he doesn't even he, he, like a side bike sorry that betrays a little bit my age it like goes over the screen goes back up and come back down he doesn't see the curve on their miles he's like <laughs> he, he's stupid beyond belief right right yeah yeah the other question i had for you both uh is um what was your reasoning for uh, both of you on holding back uh, Max Mass Menace for uh, the later part of the game? Uh, for me, it was Jin uh, going before me, and it, we we were talking about it. Like the interaction, he fucks up my camera because I still can place my camera within three of his. Or so, that's how we figured out. Maybe I'm right. I'm wrong on the on the ruling, but he kind of so it, so I would have limited use for them. So the ruling says that for well, not the ruling, but like the card itself says for each character that played this card, place a camera token in the battlefield not within three of another camera. Yeah. So it does not specify enemy or friendly like uh, camera. So yeah. we think because the cameras are kind of a neutral placement until you know it you do damage, the placement itself is kind of neutral, which means that uh, they can prevent other cameras yes. from being play each other. And then the battlefield was sort of just moved over here. So we, we put two, I put two cameras here. So I'm just like, okay, you can put cameras here, but maybe they'd be kind of awkward. So that's why Nick held off on playing his cameras. <laughs> but uh, we were discussing it on stream, but the card also says mm -hmm. while within three of cameras, uh, allied characters gain the power. So you would, if you both play Masked Menace, both get power off the cameras on the floor. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's interesting. We'll know for next okay. year because lately my uh, cool Shark Tank uh, colleague has just been throwing me into mirrors. So I have to <laughs> tread the water. For, for context here, uh, we when we played the team tournament at ACO, I think two out of the three rounds, uh, Nick, Nick was faced, facing up in the mirror. Yep. Mm. And I and, and like I hate mirrors. Any any kind of mirrors, I don't like it. But yeah, I mean, uh, and oh. Nick Menard was not playing like he's not here, but he said like you deserve each other. <laughs> so that's how that's how it ends up. Oh, okay. I actually kind of like the mirror. I I know that's not. I guess that's not really a normal thing. I guess. Um, but there's so many ways to build web warriors so that you have a lot of like core fundamentals. But there's a lot of like toolbox things you can do. But, you know, yep. if you have the stuff in your list. So I think it, it lets them be very interesting, depending yep. if you how well you know your matchups. <laughs> yeah. But I did, like, make a, a stupid... I, what I find is a stupid mistake, like, the, the round before, because I didn't see, like, for whatever reason, the spectacular was, on, spectacular was on the point. So I probably should have moved mine up there. So I had my three characters on the point, and I can't, can probably close the game at that point, because he can double move. So he has to, like, try to kick somebody off, but I still have the bonus at that point. But yeah, I mean, doesn't matter because I still won. But I think I could have ended the turn early by not sending my spectacle over here, but sending it over there with uh, Gwenham and uh, and Miles. Yeah, there was some sequencing that uh, I think you could yep. have shut. You could have ended the game, but that's okay. Matt, uh, do you have any other final thoughts for the players? So uh, yeah, Jen had a question on your all webbed up turn. Um, yes. 
why and I my thought was that you're gonna have Gwen play all of up that have AS that have Age of Venom go over there and try and deal with Miles and Gwen who are right there. Yep. Mm, okay. Yep. Yep. So he could have he could have swung over. You had a no matter the cost for the beam with your cameras out if you wanted, or just an attack and then a beam. So the the unfortunately the uh, the the no matter cost won't cover the 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 cost for one beam because I if I web swing over there I think I would be left with zero power. You were zero. So, yeah. yeah. So you get one. One damage through, which would give you two with a regular yep. attack, then you could have beamed afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I just that's just the line I saw. But I was just wondering if you if you even saw that or if you were commuting on you know, that. Yeah, I uh I thought about that and uh it came down to the fact that like um what was it? What was I thinking? I, I think what it was, I thought I thought that uh, Agent Venom was gonna be reasonably safe, but Gwen but Gwen might not be around for the, the yeah. rest of the, the thing. Yep. And I figured, like, you know, we've already have, like, spectacular, like, you know, staggered. So staggered. I was like, all right, he, he's going to be the all webbed up guy because, you know, his, his output this round is going to be pretty bad. So and I figured Gwen could then get, you know, max around so that if I spike into one of these characters, you know, I can go ahead and use a second attack to try, try to spike the other person to try to get back in the game that way. Um, it was a low percentage play. I, I agree. Um, well, I think yeah, maybe yeah. though, either way. You know? yeah, yeah 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 but i thought right. i thought i did I'd think about the asian venom line i did um and i just like it's like let me just grab more targets and i can hold off on hitting zemo later because he can't clear it with the, the aunt may's wheat cake so he was just kind of stuck there um right. so i figured that the the person i wanted to get the most was uh was Gwenum at the time because she had something you know and uh, she was the biggest thorn on my side throughout this entire match for sure yeah, but we discussed it at the, like last turn. If I wasn't able to remove Gwena, uh, not Gwena, but a uh, Flash Agent Venom with all, with all his power, if he could like get his beam down there, he could probably like go through, through my whole team. So I was like, yeah, uh, I, I have to get him off the table, and I wasn't sure if by, with my charge I'd still be on the point there and two from him. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty close, but yeah, that was clutch and uh, Zemo being. I, we covered it stupid it uh it made me be able to go to like one character and three quarters of, of the other yep you know it, it is what it is at this point you have you have you, you got early spikes with Gwenum, which set a good momentum for you to yeah. be able to move and displace people and you know cover points and then you know zemo you know once you can go with him with like you know four at least minimum four power you, mostly i feel i feel like like he gets five to six out of his you know like dice, you know, like all the time. Like it's like a ninety percent. Like I feel turnover right. a lot of times <laughs> under miles. Yeah, yeah. If he's on a so. if he's on a point or as an extract, he like it, between. I think it's four point five or something that like can he can spike up to, which is yeah. Super. Yeah, absurd. Yeah, amazing. Yep. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Just uh, thank you for for spending this yep. late evening with us. Uh, I know three people on comment here. You guys are just waiting. 10 minutes sometimes for the turn so thank you so much for being patient with us on that yes yep. uh, thank you guys for letting us stream the game it was super fun all right yeah, uh, yeah. i mean a web warrior won, so i'm happy glad you're here matt always glad you're here all right i'm gonna wrap it up guys uh so thank you very much and the obviously the event is far from over so tomorrow we got two more games and uh we'll see how that goes so i will catch you guys next time and uh, yeah, Thanks have a good night. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for everybody. See ya. All right, there we go. Game one in the books. A lot more to go. Uh, we'll catch you in the next stream. Tune in tomorrow to Mike Whalen's stream and Chewy streams. I'll be back on Thursday. So see you then. Oh yeah. Thanks, Matt Alex, and thanks Vodka Blitz for joining Mono Commentary. That was great.